The container ship collided with a key bridge in Baltimore, U.S. early uh, Tuesday, causing the bridge to collapse and sending people into the frigid water. Two people are rescued while several others are still missing. Rescue operations are currently underway. It was a Maersk chartered ship and all 22 crew members are Indians. A serene skyline disrupted by a devastating incident as a bridge in the United States city of Baltimore collapsed in the early hours on Tuesday after being hit by a container ship. The 1.6 mile long Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed after a MERS chartered and Colombo bound ship was hit by a big ship. Initial reports suggested that several vehicles fell into the chilly waters and rescuers were searching for many people who fell into the river. The Baltimore Fire Department chief result, said that initially we were in two water. people were rescued. We were able to remove uh, two people from the water. One individual refused service and refused transport. Essentially that person was not injured. However, there was another individual that's been transported to a local trauma center that is in very serious condition. Baltimore authorities have termed it as a very large incident while the FBI has joined the local authorities on the spot. Baltimore's police chief has said that there is no indication of terrorism in the shocking incident. According to reports, Baltimore ranks as the ninth biggest US port for international cargo, handling a record 52.3 million tons, valued at $80.8 .8 billion in 2023. A collapse like this threatens to disrupt shipping operations at the major U.S. trade hub. With Vishal Vivek, Bureau Report, NDTV. In fact, the Maryland Governor Wes Moore has said that investigation so far shows that it's not a targeted attack or there is no angle of a terror attack uh, which has come forth yet. We are still investigating what happened, but we are quickly gathering details. The preliminary investigation points to an accident. We haven't seen any credible evidence of a terrorist attack. Our administration is working closely with leaders from all levels of government and society to respond to this crisis and not but just by addressing the immediate aftermath, but also by building a state that is more resilient and a state that's more safe. Right, and to discuss this further, I'm joined by Mr. Steve Herman, Chief National Correspondent of Voice of America, and he's joining us from Virginia and the U.S. Steve, thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast here. First of all, uh, you know, the question which is on everyone's mind, how many people are still missing? If you can give us an update in terms of the rescue operations which are underway. Yes, we know that at least six people are missing. They were construction workers, Hispanics, who were on the bridge filling potholes in the middle of the night, uh, when this catastrophe happened. There also is believed to be a number of drivers of vehicles, in, including a uh, tractor trailer rig uh, that apparently was on the bridge at the time. But this happened at 1.30 in the morning, so it did not have the rush hour traffic it normally would have uh, on a weekday. So if there's any good thing about this uh, disaster, it's that it happened in the middle of the night. That's right, Stephen. I believe there was a May Day call which was also issued. In fact, now the authorities are coming out with more and more detail. And there was a May Day call which was issued by the crew members. And uh, first of all, I wanted to ask you, was it too late for the authorities to respond? But then I also read that probably they were able to curb the traffic on the bridge even more after that call. Correct. Uh, they couldn't get the traffic off the bridge, obviously, but they could prevent more traffic. We don't know how long of a delay there was uh, uh, between the Mayday call and the, and, and the bridge being uh, closed, so to speak. Uh, it could have been a matter of uh, just a minute or even uh, uh, some seconds between uh, uh, the, the call and hitting the bridge uh, after the uh, MV Dolly, uh, a ship named after Salvador Dolly, lost propulsion and, um, and, and crashed into a main pillar of the bridge. Um, so the search and rescue uh, operations are underway, but of course it's now been uh, 11 hours since it happened. So anyone under the water presumably is still not alive. Right, um, Steve, also what we have heard is that, you know, there were, it was a chartered ship 
a ship chartered by Maersk and none of their crew members were on board. But the, uh, the ship actually had Indian crew member and all Indian crew uh, uh, on the ship uh, that we know of and there were 22 of them on board they are all safe we are given to understand that have authorities so far spoken in detail to the crew to actually piece together what happened what went wrong yeah our understanding is that's going to happen later all the crew is being held on the ship i should also mention that at the time of the accident uh, the vessel which had left the port of baltimore just 30 minutes ago uh, would have been under the control of two local pilots. This is very routine because of the sophistication of getting a big ship like this in and out of a, a crowded uh, harbor. The water is only 15 meters deep, apparently, at this point where the accident happened. So uh, they're going to definitely want to talk more than anybody else uh, to these pilots who presumably were not Indians uh, who were in control of the vessel at the time of the accident. Right, that's very significant. Also, Steve, uh, what we are told, uh, in fact, the Maryland governor just spoke a short while back, and we've also seen the uh, social media post by the Homeland Security authorities. They have at the moment said that there's no indication of any sort of a targeted or a terror attack. But is it too early to rule this out? Or, uh, you know, because it's early days in the investigation still, as you said, the detailed conversation with the crew will happen in some time. But what are the... Uh, clear signals that the authorities have so far to indicate that this seems to be a clear case of an accident? Yes, a very good question. Well, as I said, it was under the control of these local pilots. Uh, it was an all Indian crew. Uh, and there was this uh, mayday call, and uh, they could see uh, uh, presumably that the ship was uh, had a loss of propulsion, was was out of control. So I haven't heard uh, in anybody connected to this investigation, no officials. They're very adamant uh, stating that there's this is not a, a terrorist act, that this appears to be an unfortunate uh, accident. Mm. Right. We'll, of course, have to see how the investigations proceed further. Steve, one last question to you. You know, we've also seen, uh, heard the Maryland governor actually mention that they are going to start the process very soon of rebuilding a bridge. It was a bridge which was on that location for 47 years. Uh, but what lessons have we learned from this incident? Well, I think they're probably going to change the design of this bridge. There was talk at one time about putting bumpers around these pillars to prevent this sort of scenario from happening. So I expect a, a, a significant uh, redesign. Uh, but it took five years to build this bridge, presumably after years of planning for it. So uh, this is going to be a huge problem for uh, the city of Baltimore because this is a part of Interstate 695, this bridge, and for the port of Baltimore for presumably years to come. Right. Uh, Steve Herman there from The Voice of America. Thank you so much, Steve, for joining us in this broadcast and giving us, us those very crucial updates coming in from this big international story that we are following here on, on NDTV. Thank you so much for joining us with that.